Hey everyone, this is Matthew Kent. Welcome to Theology on the Ground and the Daily Thought from my quiet time. And today going over uh, continuing in 1 John chapter 2. And for whatever reason this time uh, going through the Bible, I've been particularly fascinated uh, with 1 John and with, with John's letter here. So let's pick it up. Uh, a verse that I've always loved, 1 John 2.15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride and possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God will live, or whoever does the will of God abides forever. Now, first thing that should be noted is when he says, do not love the world, it's not talking in the same sense John 3.16, you know, says, for God so love the world. It would make no sense for God to love the world and then for us to not love the world. Clearly in the context of John chapter 3, he's talking about people, individuals, uh, then that Jesus came and died for. Here we're not talking about the individuals. Here what we're talking about, uh, you know, he clarifies the things that are of the world, the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. Uh, it's not how my version reads, but that's how um, I think it is in the NASB where I originally memorized this verse. Um, th those things, we're talking about a, a world view. So, so not the people that we're called not to love, but it's it's the the views that they hold that are hostile to God and are against His truth and against His moral will uh, for our lives. And so you love the, you know, it, it's very similar to the idea, you know, that you, you love the sinner, hate the sin. And of course, in loving the sinner, the most loving thing you can do is, is call them out for the sin. But here, you know, it's, it's, it's talking about the Christian needing uh, to refrain from that, to draw back from that. But then what struck me here is what's interesting is the argument. The command is first given, do not love the world or the things in the world. So two, two different things, do not love the world or the things in the world. And then here's what it says. Um, for all that is in the world, so now we're talking about the things of the world, not the world, uh, which is one of the two things he identified. The lust of the flesh and the um, desires of the eyes and the pride and possessions uh, is not from the Father, but is from the world. Now, before, if you just take out the phrase from the Father, it, it just kind of ends up being this circular argument. Uh, do not love the world or the things in the world. And the reason is because the things in the world are from the world well, of course uh, but where it becomes an argument is because it's not from the father so in other words you know in god there is truth and beauty and goodness and love and wisdom and patience and gentleness and self-control uh, and all of these wonderful things and creativity and um just i mean it's it's wonderful who God is and what he is like. And to some extent, everything that we are called to is called to be a, a reflection of that, an extension of the life uh, that has already existed for eternity past in God himself. And so I've, I've heard it put best. There was a, a mentor I had one time who says that um, when we do good, all that we're doing is is basically making Mexican food. So if you think about Mexican food, you have the same few, you know, meat and cheese and rice and beans and, and tortillas and that kind of thing. Same few ingredients. And, you know, you, you, you package it one way and it's called a burrito. You package it a different way. It's called an enchilada. Um, no offense to, to the, that Tex-Mex style. I guess it's not even really Mexican food. It's Southwest, you, whatever it is. Um, it's all the same. And... Uh, it's similar to like that when we do good works. In one sense, we're, we're creative and we're bringing something new into the world and doing something new and good, whether we're Christian or non-Christian, uh, both can do things that are, in a certain sense, pleasing to God. Um, but we're really just taking the, the raw ingredients that God has given us and rearranging it, you know, eight different ways. And so things that are good are derivative from God, come from God. And things that are not good that we need to avoid are things that are contrary to God, do not come from God, but rather come from a worldview or a system uh, of belief that is, is hostile to God. So it's one of the, the all the more encouragements, you know, Hebrews encourages us to, to look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And that really is what it's all about. Um, as Christians with a conscience, we have a certain good idea anyway of what right and wrong is. But 
the bottom line, the punchline, the rub is that we've got to constantly be looking to Jesus, looking to God himself uh, to see what we are supposed to be like. Really dense, deep set of verses here. Uh, I was really happy to talk about them with you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Lord willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow.